and we are going to move into the passenger section of the T9 Automo Blocks project now. And you can go ahead and navigate to the passenger section page, and you'll notice this uh, diagram or this PDF document that I've included on the page that gives you all the necessary dimensions. And before we even get started, I would like you to go open up a new part file in Autodesk Inventor, do a save as into your T9 Automoblox folder and call the part passenger section. After you've done that, come on back and let's go ahead and talk about this. So don't forget that you're gonna have to insert a screen clip when you're all done uh, right above this picture so you can get your progress points. The other thing I wanted to make note of that you don't need 3D annotations on your model. So you know how these have the 3D annotations. You actually don't have to add that to your model because we're going to do the drawings at the end of this. And you're just going to want to take a look at all the dimensions that are given. Notice sometimes you have a 4x indicating that that's four times. Again, here on the outside edges for your fillets, looking at some depths. Uh, you got a detail view here that we're going to talk about. Again, looking at some depth. So just go through and look through all this and look at the information that's given. Notice that this says it's a front view versus this is a rear view. You know, sometimes I think we just kind of want to rush and get into things without kind of just taking a look at what's given already. So that way we can develop a game plan to go ahead and model this part. The other thing you'll want to look at is the general notes. You got some materials and it says that the front cutout is different is a different size and location than the rear so notice there's a cutout in the front but then there's also a cutout in the rear so what it's saying is that those are not duplicates so you can't just like mirror this to the back because they are different sizes and different locations and the other quick note you can create a custom text which we'll do at the very end that'll be the last thing that you can add to the sides both sides of the passenger section of this uh, for this part. So uh, let's talk about this little error, this leader coming off that says detail A, which is referencing this. So there's a tiny little cutout on this side and this side, so it's on both sides. And instead of showing those tiny little dimensions and kind of clogging up the drawing here, we're creating a detail view which creates a little cutout and blows that little area up so you can see really nice how big that cutout is. So it's 0 0.06 by 0 0.06. And it's also giving you a location. Now it's only giving you a height location dimension because that cutout is perfectly orientated on the edge of the part on both sides. So you'll want to make note of that when you go to do those. So what do I think you should be able to do on your own? I think you should be able to do all of this except for the text, which is what I'm going to really focus on in this video. So again, uh, you got to think about where you want to start. Now I started in the front plane and I just created that simple sketch and I extruded it back and then I started working from there. And again, you're breaking each one of these down into separate sketches and then an extrusion. So if you notice, I did this middle cutout next. Then I did the front cutout with a sketch and then extruded it. Then I did the rear one in the back and extruded it. Then I added my outside fillets on the edges. The inside fillets, there's 12 of those. And then I did those notches on each side at the very end. So the last thing I want to talk about is how to emboss. So if you want, you can pause the video right now. Go ahead, follow the OneNote dimensions and everything that you see in here and catch up with me and then I'm going to show you how to do the embossed text next. Alright, so now that you're caught up, let's go ahead and create some text. I'm going to work on the right side first. We're going to have to do both of these separately. So I'm going to do a new sketch on this face right here. So I'm going to go start 2D sketch, click on that face, make sure your view cube is orientated correctly that you can read that text for the right view. And then I'm going to use the text tool, which is up in the create panel. So I'm going to left click that. And then if you notice down on the bottom left of your screen, it says click on a location or two corners. So pretty much we're going to left click once and then we're going to left click again to drag out a text box. 
So I know that I want it to be in this area, so I'm going to keep my text box in there. And I'm just going to simply left click somewhere up in this upper left corner, let go. Oops, I'm sorry, you got to left click, hold, and drag. Take that back. Text tool, left click, hold down your mouse button, and drag out a text box. So if you didn't left click, hold, and drag, just cancel and then re drag out the text box. There we go. Now, the one thing that I don't like about Inventor is that it doesn't preview the text. So what I like to do is just open up a Word document, type out the text, whatever I want it to say, and then I just start playing around with some fonts and finding one that I like that I think is going to be good. And I will tell you this, you're going to want to use a bigger, bolder font. Do not choose something really thin or like a calligraphy you don't want a super thin or like cursive type font because it's not going to show up really well when we go to emboss it. So pick something bigger and bold. Okay, so I'm going to go with this Bank Gothic MDBT, whatever that is. So I'm going to choose that one when I go back in into Inventor. So when I type in my text, and I'm going to go all caps, you could do whatever you want though. This is where you can be a little bit creative and type. Uh, whatever you want as long as it's school appropriate and then I'm gonna highlight it and I'm gonna drop down this menu and then I'm gonna go find that text that I found while I was in Word back there and here it is right here you don't have to use the same one as me pick whatever you want and we're gonna do a little bit of guessing and checking here because I don't know how big I need my text so I'm just going to drop down this menu and I don't know I'm gonna try whatever the biggest is I'm gonna try about like two 0.24 or 0.25 inches in text height and just see how it looks if I don't like it I can come back in here highlight this I could still change the font if I don't like it I can make it a little bit bigger you could also turn on the bold maybe I want this to be a little bit bolder so I'm gonna try that I'm gonna say okay and that actually worked out pretty well so now I'm still in the text tool so it still thinks I want to draw text boxes so I'm gonna hit escape to get out of that on the keyboard and now I'm out of it and then I can go ahead and if I didn't like this, I would just double click back on it. I would highlight my text. If you want to go bigger, you can try and play around with the numbers. If you want to go a different font, that's how you can get back into it. But it's just important that you highlight the text. You have to highlight it in order to make the changes. Once you're happy, click OK. The other thing I'm going to do is just grab a corner of the text box and kind of just resize this a little bit to fit the text. Now let's say you want to move it. Just simply hover over it, left click, hold, and drag. And I'm just going to eye this up and try and center it the best I can. Once you're happy with the text, you can click Finish Sketch. And I'm going to go ahead and use the Emboss tool. So the Emboss tool is located in the Create panel right here. And the first thing it wants you to do is select a profile or the text. So what do I want to emboss? I'm going to click on my text here. And then it has depth. So how far do you want to emboss that text? So you have an emboss or you have an engrave. So this is also where you can make a decision. So an emboss is kind of like extruding the text out versus an engrave is kind of like cutting it into the wood. So you can pick which one you want to do. Do you want to do an emboss or do you want to do an engrave? You can pick. I will tell you for the depth of that, we're going to want to go 0 .05. So go ahead and type that in. Whoops, I don't want two points. Get rid of that. Then I can say OK. Um, What just happened? And if you get this error message that pops up, it says create emboss feature failed and I expand that and I expand that it says that there's some kind of self intersecting loop pretty much inventor doesn't like the font that I chose so I'm just gonna say cancel I'm gonna go back into my sketch I'm gonna double click on the icon over here double click back on my text and I need to pick a different font so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go with and Adobe Gothic. So I went back into Word. I found a different one that I liked. And I'm going to also adjust the size here. And I'm going to try this one. So and I'm going to move it, kind of center it up. I'm going to finish the sketch. And I still don't like where that's at. Let me move it over a little bit here. 
That looks better. And then now I'm going to try and boss again. Click on my profile, which is my text. Make sure the depth is correct. Choose whether I want to emboss or engrave, and then click OK. And then there we go. So that's what you want to do. And then you're going to repeat that same process, and you're going to do the same thing on the other side over here. So you'll do a new 2D sketch, drag out a text box. Pick out your font, your size, say OK, center it up the best you can, and then do an emboss on that side, or an engrave, whatever you want to do, and then now you have it also on that side. Now if you haven't done this already, go ahead and change your materials. This is going to be wood birch for this drop down, and then just birch natural polished for this one. And that's going to give it that wood-like uh, look to it, as well as birch uh, properties, physical properties. And then what I'm going to do is I want to show you how to make your label pop a little bit more with some color. So what I'm going to do is just click on the face of the letter, my first letter. And then I'm going to hold Shift, and I'm going to click on the face of all the other letters. So Shift allows me to grab multiple faces. So I'm still holding Shift, and I click on all those faces. You can see they're all highlighted blue. And instead of the... I'm going to change just the color, not the material. I'm just changing the color of that face. So I'm going to drop this down, and this time I'm going to choose black. And you'll notice right away that I now have a nice black look on top of my uh, faces there for my label. And then you can go ahead on the other side and do the exact same thing. Now when you're all done, don't forget to update your eye properties. save and then scoot this over again you don't have to do 3d annotations don't have to add dimensions to the model screen clip the browser and the model into your binder right above this image whoops and paste it right there resize it if it's a little big and then that'll ensure